Hello, welcome to today's lesson. This is Sir Lawrence. So today we're going to run through the muscles of the shoulder. We're going to run through the muscles of the shoulder. We're talking about the muscles of the shoulder today. All right. So in this video lesson, we're going to be talking about what the shoulder is all about. Then the muscles they are divided into two. We have extrinsic muscles and intrinsic muscles. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. All right, so we know that the shoulder is um, one of the regions of the upper limb. You have the upper limb that is segmented, having the shoulder region, you have your arm region, you have your forearm and your hand, right? So we're focusing on the shoulder and we're focusing on the muscles of the shoulder. So what the shoulder does is to connect the upper limb to the trunk via the pectoral gate. Pectoral gate is just like um, is the bones, they are a group of bones that connect the rest part of the upper limb, which is the arm and the forearm and the hand, connecting these regions of the upper limb to the shoulder. So it's comprising of the clavicle, the scapula, and a proximal part of the humerus. That's what forms this pectoral gate. So the bones of the shoulder region we have the clavicle, we have the scapula. And we have the humerus. These are the bones that form the bones of the shoulder region. So the muscles, the muscles are divided into two. We have the extrinsic muscles and we have the intrinsic muscles. So I'm going to talk about each of them in this lesson. All right. So let's go into the extrinsic muscles. Extrinsic muscles. Why are they called extrinsic muscles? Is because they are found in the trunk. They are found in the trunk, but they come to insert on the shoulder region. Do you get? The trunk comprises of the thorax, abdomen, and the pelvis and perineum. So they originate from there, and then they go to insert on the shoulder region. They insert on the bones of the shoulder region, which is the clavicle, the scapula, and the humerus. They are located in the back, and they are also called superficial back muscles. These muscles, extrinsic muscles, they are divided into two layers. We have the superficial layer, and then we have the deep layer. The superficial layer of these extrinsic muscles, we have the trapezius. And the latissimus dorsi muscle, and the deep layer, the muscles that comprise the deep layer is the levator scapulae and the rhomboid muscles, which is the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. So we're going to talk about them in details now. All right, so this is the trapezius muscles. Remember, it's forming part of superficial layer, right? So this is the trapezius muscle. You can see the muscle is triangular in shape. You can see the way it is it's triangular in shape. So this muscle is broad, flat, and triangular, which you can see is the most superficial muscle of all back muscles. So when you um, uh, flap up the skin, subtenous layer, the next layer you find is this muscle, this trapezius muscle. So you can see the origins originating from here, which is the skull, from the, the, the local, local, local ligament, which is found there, it originates from there. And you can see it originating from the spinous process. Of the vertebra, so it's originated for spinous process of C7 down to T12, and then you can see it, it, it has three fibers this is superior fiber, this is the middle fiber, this is the inferior fiber. Then they provide to insert on the spine of the scapula, acromion of the scapula, and then the clavicle anteriorly. So this muscle receives its innervation from the accessory nerve. And what it does, depending on the part, it has three parts, we said, super, um, superior part, middle part, and the inferior part. So what the superior part does is to elevate the scapula, you get that. Then this middle part retracts the scapula, and then this inferior part pulls the scapula inferiorly. So that's it for the trapezius muscle, the most superficial back muscle. Alright, this is the small dorsal muscle. Another um, extrusive muscle found in superficial, the superficial group of extrusive muscle. So this muscle, you can see how it is. It's also found in the trunk, right? It's found in the trunk. So it's a superficial muscle located in the lower back. So this muscle, you can see it originating from the spinous process of T7 and then to spinous process of T12. And then you see, you can see it originating from the iliac crest. This is the iliac crest, right? And then there is a um, tuberculumbar fascia that also originates from, which is not shown here. 
and then from the ribs you can see the, the lower leg ribs they are here ribs 10 to 12 so it originates from the spinous process of t7 to t12 a like rest to a columbar fascia and the ribs 10 to 12 and then you can see it is caused superlaterally to insert on the intertubercular surface of the humerus remember the intertubercular surface of the humerus is found on the anterior space, right? Anterior surface of the humerus, a proximal part of it, right? So the innervation of this muscle is coming from the thoracodosal nerve. So thoracodosal nerve supplies these muscles. So what this muscle does is when it contracts, when it contracts, it's going to extend, adopt, and medially rotate the upper limb. So that's what it really does. That's what the latissimus dorsal muscle does. All right. So now let's move on to the next muscle, which is the levator scapulae. Levator scapulae is a very small muscle. It's a small muscle. It's originating from transverse process now. Transverse process of C1, C2, C3, and C4 vertebra. And then you can see it is caused inferiorly and laterally to insert on the medial border of the scapula above the spine. This is the spine. This is the acromion. Spine and acromion. So it inserts. On the media border of the spine above the media border of the acromion above the spine so what does it do when it contracts it's going to elevate the scapula you get that so that's it for the levato scapula all right so now let's go into this other set of more this one is forming part the deep layer of the exclusive muscle right so what this muscle does you can see this muscle you have two layers you have the rhomboid minor and you have the rhomboid major right so let's talk about the rhomboid major which is this so the rhomboid major you can see it originating from spinous process so it's originating from spinous process. if you count down uh, you get your um, t2 here so it's originating from the spinous process of t2 t3 t4 t5 and then it runs in few and lateral to insert on the media border of the scapula between the spine of the scapula and the inferior angle so this is the spine right of the scapula and this is the inferior angle right so it's originating is inserting in between them so this muscle you see also receives innervation from the dosal scapular nerve so what it does is when it contracts it retracts and rotates the scapula so that's what this muscle does that's it for the rhomboid major so for the rhomboid minor, you can see the rhomboid minor is originating from spinal spaces of T C7 and T1 only. T C7 and T1 only. It's originating from spinal spaces of C7 and T1 vertebra. And then it causes inferior lateral to insert on the medial border of the scapula at the level of the spine of the scapula. So that's where it inserts. So this muscle receives innervation from dosa scapular nerve, right? And what it does is when it contracts, it retracts and rotates the scapula. So that's what this muscle does, the rhomboid minor muscle. All right. So we'll be able to talk about the extrusive muscle. Why are they called extrusive? Because they usually originate from another region, which is the trunk, and then come to insert on the shoulder region, right? So this muscle. These ones we'll be talking about subsequently are intrinsic muscles. These ones they originate from regions within the shoulder region and then they insert in shoulder. That is, they originate from a part of the shoulder region and insert on another part of that same shoulder region. That's why I call it intrinsic. They are within that region. Intrinsic. They are out. They are coming from somewhere and coming to insert in the shoulder region. Do you get that? That's the simple term. Uh, we concept there. So now we have this muscle called the deltoid muscle. From the name deltoid, you can see it's deltoid shape, right? Is the muscle. Very bony. You, you can feel the muscle, right? You can touch this region, your shoulder region. It's there, right? So you have this deltoid muscle. It has three parts. You have an anterior part, which is not visible here. You have the middle part, this is the middle part, and you have the posterior part. So what eh, the origin of this muscle, you can see this muscle is originating. From the spine of the scapula, acromion of the scapula, and you have the lateral one third of the clavicle. You know the clavicle is divided into 
medial two third and lateral one third. So it's originating from the lateral one third of the clavicle. So it's originating from the spine of the scapula, um, acromion of the scapula. This is the acromion of the scapula, and then the lateral one third of the clavicle. So it goes to insert on the um, deltoid tuberosity of the humerus, right? So that's where it inserts. Remember, the deltoid tuberosity is found on the anterior surface, I mean, anterior surface of the humerus, as on the body of the humerus. It's found on the anterior surface of the body of the humerus. So that's the original insertion of this module. From the spine, acromion, and lateral antenna, then goes to insert on the deltoid tuberosity, all right? So the um, innervation is coming from the axillary nerve. So what it does is anterior fiber usually flanks and medially rotates the arm. The middle fiber adopts the arm from 15 to 90 degrees, while the posterior fiber extends and laterally rotates the arm. All right. So now let's go into this deltoid muscle, another implicit muscle. This muscle originates from here. You can see it originating from the deltoid, from the posterior surface, posterior surface of the inferior angle of the scapula. This is the inferior angle of the scapula, the posterior surface. And then it goes to insert on the medial lip. You know the intertubacular surface has two lips, lateral and medial. Insert on the medial lip of the intertubacular surface of the humerus anteriorly. You get so the innervation is coming from the lower subscapular nerve. So what it does is when it contracts, it medially rotates the arm. So now we have another set of muscles. There are four in number. They are still intrinsic muscles, but they are called rotator cuff muscles. Why? Because they surround the shoulder region. They surround the shoulder joint, they give stability to the shoulder joint, hence they are called the rotator cuff muscles. You get that. So these muscles we have the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and teres and subscapularis. So now let's talk about each of these muscles. Now this is supraspinatus muscle. Supraspinatus muscle. That's this muscle here, right? This is the muscle here. This is the posterior surface of the scapula. So this is muscle is found in the supra. Um, spinous uh, fossa. Remember the supraspinous fossa, right? So it originates from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula, and then it goes to insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. You know, humerus has um, two tubercles, greater and lesser, so it inserts on the greater tubercle. So the innervation is coming from the supraspinous nerve. So what it does is when it contracts, it adopts the arm from zero to 15 degree so when you're adopting you're adopting taking the arm away from the um, trunk so it's take it just from zero to 15 degree you get that so that's what this does so now let's go into the infraspinatus this muscle look at it here it's originating from the infraspinous fossa of the scapula then it goes laterally goes to insert on the greater tobacco of the humerus also so innervation is coming from the suprascapular nerve. So what it does is when it contracts, what it does is to laterally rotate your arm. So that's where this infraspinatus muscle does. Now let's go into this next muscle, the teres minor. Teres minor is found on the posterior, it's originated from the posterior surface of the scapula, adjacent to the lateral border. Look at it here. Look at the teres minor. This is the teres minor muscle. You can see it here. So you need for the posterior surface of the scapula. Adjacent to the lateral border. This is the lateral border, right? Of the scapula, and this is the medial border of the scapula. So it's originating from the lateral posterior surface of the scapula, adjacent to the lateral border. So it goes laterally to insert on the greater tobacco of the humerus also. So the innervation is coming from the axillary nerve. So what it does is when it contracts, it laterally rotates the arm. So that's what this teres minor does. Now let's talk about this muscle, the last muscle of the shoulder region, the subscapularis. So the subscapularis, remember we have on the anterior surface of the scapula a fossa called the subscapular fossa. So it's originating from this subscapular fossa. This is the muscle here, the subscapularis muscle. So it's originating from this subscapular fossa, and then it runs laterally and anteromedially to insert on the lesser tubercle. Of the humerus, so this is the lesser tobacco of the humerus. You get that. So, innervation um, to this muscle comes from the upper and lower subscapular nerves. So, that's what innervates this muscle the upper and lower subscapular nerve. So, when this muscle contracts, what does it do? 
when it contracts, it pulls that comes this way, it pulls itself this way. What it's gonna do is 